in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Making comparisons is an interesting but also inherent human trait, human feature, human characteristic. No matter how old we are or who we are, there is always this tendency to compare ourselves with others. Sometimes it could be conscious, intentional, but often it is also unconscious. We don't really intend it, but it just happens. We just start comparing ourselves with others. But there is always a need to compare ourselves, need to measure ourselves in reference to another person, relative to another person or persons. Of course, when comparisons get out of hand, it could become a problem. Unfortunately, our culture, which is uh, an advertising, marketing, and popularity-oriented culture, does not seem to help. We are always surrounded by these advertisements and marketing and propaganda and all these larger-than-life images of people, right? Celebrities and, and rich people, powerful people. And there is always this tendency, this temptation to compare ourselves with them and say, okay, I want to be this, I want to be that. Or in many cases, as we know from our, say, television advertisements and others, there is always this eagerness to have more, to have what others have, and often have more than what others have. So it's not just simply having what other person has, but just kind of this unconscious feeling within us that tempts us to say, it'd be nice to have something more than that other person. In other words, to be above the other person. This is in a way normal, but also we know that it is not something to be encouraged. Thankfully, we have been reminded by wise minds throughout the ages, throughout the centuries, to be cautious about this attitude, this human tendency, this human trait. While we should engage with others, engage in conversation with others, dialogue with others, relate with others to learn from them and to grow with them, comparisons can be dangerous. Comparisons could lead us to lose sight of who, who we are, lose sight of our own blessings, lose sight of what God has given us. We lose, in some sense, our own lives by comparing. We see this indicated in the gospel lesson that we heard this morning. The parable of the workers in the vineyard, a very popular parable as we know, teaches us that in God's kingdom there is justice and fairness. God treats everyone equally, no matter who they are. No matter when they join the kingdom, no matter when they become God's children. I mean, everyone is God's children, but when they decide to follow Christ, they decide to be faithful to God. There is no special treatment for anyone. So, of course, there is always this idea that there are hierarchies in heaven. We don't know for that, don't know about that for sure, but we do know that God treats everyone equally. But as you noticed, the workers in the vineyard, the workers who worked at the, in the vineyard, those who came first, compared themselves with those who came last and felt that they were entitled to more wages, more wages than the ones who came last. They felt that they were better than others and because they came first, they had worked the entire day, they worked hard, of course, and they were frustrated when those who were last were treated the same way as them. 
when the landowner treated them equally. In fact, the, the last ones were the ones who were paid first. So the first ones were made to wait to receive the wages. We don't know exactly why the landowner did that. We don't know really what Jesus intended by this. But we do see that in their frustration, the first ones, the first workers, the ones who came first, they forgot to see that the landowner owner had indeed been fair to them and they had received their fair wages. They had been justly rewarded for their wages. That's what they signed up for. That was the reward. And yet when they received it, because they were not looking at their own wages in a way, but rather what others had received, they forgot to, to they failed to realize what they had received. They forgot to be thankful for they had, what they had received. This simple parable, in a way, is a reminder for us to be more mindful of God's blessings. To be more mindful and to be more grateful for God's blessings. There is always this temptation within us to compare. To compare with someone else to compare with those who may have more or less. And sometimes this comparison leads us to think that we are indeed better than others. In some sense, pushing us into envy and, and pride as well. And oftentimes this comparison could also happen with ourselves. A good example is the story of the Israelites. Comparisons with our own past. In the first lesson that we heard this morning, they looked back to Egypt, a land where they were enslaved, where they were in bondage, where they were oppressed, where they were ill-treated for over 400 years. And all that they could say in comparison was, that was much better. That was much better. They longed to go back to Egypt, even if it meant certain oppression and even death for them. Very interesting. It is so nice to think of the past. It's so nice sometimes to compare with the past. Recently I read something uh, on Facebook actually said that nostalgia, I mean of course the wording was a bit different, uh, but said nostalgia is, is, a, is, kind of, is, is a dangerous thing in some sense because it makes you believe that the past was beautiful. And of course, of course, the past, you know, is beautiful. You have beautiful memories. But then what you don't remember is that you had struggles back then too. You had issues. You had, you know, things that you had to deal with. Uh, one of the deacons that used to serve with me at my other church, uh, Deacon Charlie, now he's in Florida, he used to always say, the, 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 the issue with, talking about good old days is that those days were not really that good. But it just makes you feel good, you know, when you think about the past. And then you kind of live in the past and you want to keep that as a reference and keep saying, you know, that was better, that was better. And failing to see that th those days were not really that good. And also the problem is you don't live in the present. You lose sight of your blessings. You lose sight of, you know, the, the, the beauty that is around you. You fail to see the rewards that you are having, the blessings that you're having on your hands. And you kind of become miserable. You grumble, as the gospel text says. They grumble, they complain. So you end up complaining, you end up grumbling and losing joy and peace. And also importantly, the strength to face your present and your future. This simple gospel text reminds us that comparisons, when we let go out of hand, could become dangerous. And they could, you know, take away the joy. It could take away the way, it could distract us from the way we see God. Remember, the landowner is actually a, is a, is a, is a representative or, or, you know, a sign, a symbol for God, a metaphor for God. And they complain against God, literally. 
Of course, sometimes comparisons are needed. They are inevitable. They are necessary, especially when there are unjust political and social structures in place. So it doesn't mean that we just accept everything that we have. But the point is that it is important for us to be more conscious and more thankful about our blessings and rewards that God has given us. We are invited to focus on our calling, on our work, on the work that we signed up for, on what God has called us to do. We are called to focus on the present, on what we have, what we are experiencing, the beauty of our lives, the joy of our lives, the blessings of our lives, rather than somewhere else. Uh, some of the, the, the doctors that I follow on social media uh, often have, are reminding us that many of the health issues that we have today in our society, both mental health and physical health, uh, are in some sense related to our mindset. And one of the remedies that some of these doctors are prescribing is to practice the art of gratefulness, the art of thankfulness. In fact, I, have, I, I follow this doctor, Dr. Pal, who keeps saying, you know, keep a gratitude journal. That is probably the best remedy for it. For, I mean, it's not the only one, of course. You need to take a medication, all that. But for your physical and medical, your, your mental ailments, start practicing gratitude. And this is funny coming from a medical doctor, <laughs> from a professional medical doctor, and saying, you know, don't forget that. Because, and of course, he explains all of this in a more in a medical language, you know, the, the, the hormones that are generated uh, and this and that, which I, of course, I can't really understand. But gratitude, thankfulness, being mindful for what God has given us is certainly a healing process, a healing experience. May God grant us, my dear brothers and sisters, the wisdom to be aware of, to be mindful of, and to be grateful for the blessings that God has given us, the rewards that God has already given us, what we signed up for, so to speak. And in that grateful spirit, in the thankful spirit, thankful attitude, may we also find strength, may we find peace and strength to face the challenges in our lives today. Amen.